Hey everyone, it's Devin from the Maniology team with our weekly live every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. You can find us here on another nail stamping journey. Whether it's a tutorial, technique, or hack, we're here to discuss the details with you and we're so happy you could join. Hello everyone, thank you for your patience while I, you know, set my space up and got everything ready for you all. So this week, if you haven't figured out, we're doing a series called Nails to Match. In this series, we're gonna be taking different looks that inspire us. It could be makeup, it could be clothing, it could be whatever we want. But basically the idea is that we are making nails to match. So the theme for this week is going to be from I am Kayla. You should definitely check out her makeup. It is gorgeous. She does a phenomenal job. We saw a beautiful like butterfly look that she created on NYX. Okay, so by the way, I don't know. Is it NYX? Is it NYX? I don't know. I've heard people say NYX. I've heard people say NYX. I think it's NYX Cosmetics, but you know, don't get mad if I said it wrong. <laughs> So we're going to be doing a look using the look that create a little, bleh, <laughs> little tongue tie. We're going to be designing a manicure that is inspired by I Am Kayla um, and her gorgeous butterfly look that she created for NYX Cosmetics. So are you guys excited? Because I am very excited to show you this look. Give me one sec though. Isn't it fun when you're like working on something and you're doing something and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, what just happened? Where did that go? Um, so fun fact, I have a broken nail and it really sucks and I have not had a chance to fix my broken nail. So today I was planning to wear the glove for you all, but my glove disappeared and I was literally holding it in my hand. Like I'm pretty sure it's gonna be one of those things where it was like I lift something up and then all of a sudden the glove's like right in front of my face, but whatever. You guys are gonna see my broken nail, so I'm gonna try and keep it out of the frame. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, you must always have beautiful nails because you work for a nail company. It's like, no, that's not true. I wish that was so true. I wish someone was doing my nails so I could have beautiful nails all the time. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm busy, so I haven't had much time to, to do my own nails. Okay, so today, in order to get this look, let me show you the products that we're going to be using. Um, the first thing we will need to create this look is plate. M27. So this is from our NAMI Hawaii collaboration. We talked about this last week. I want to say it's either last week or the week before. Um, we talked about our nonprofit organization collaborations. Wow, that's like a rhyme, nonprofit organization collaboration. But yeah, that is exactly what this is. So we paired up with NAMI Hawaii, which focuses on um, different aspects of mental health and we're going to be using this design today. It's so cute for our little happy butterflies. And then you're going to need your polish colors. So let me move this out of the way so we can show you all the different colors you're gonna need. You're gonna need straight up black, bam white, This is our concealing base coat. Then this is Expedition Pearl. Droplet. Oh gosh, brain fart and the sticker came out. A uh, sticker came off. Okay, I cannot remember for the life of me what this color is called. I want to call it frosty, but I don't think it is. So if you know the name of this color, mention it in the comments below so that way everyone else can take a look. 
The plate number we're using is M271. And the very last color we're going to be using is Indicon. So I don't remember, or well, you guys weren't in this, but a couple of weeks ago we did like a little um, workshop for a bunch of super awesome young creatives who are interested in the beauty industry and we showed them how to create a manicure with our classic beauty stamping kit and these were the one of the polishes that was included so it's like a mini polish and again this color is called indicon oh tiana thank you so much by the way she's helping us today in case you guys haven't figured it out this color is called bubbly so we're going to be using a good amount of colors today. It's funny because when you look at this, it doesn't look very complex, but it's not, but it looks like it is. And that is the goal. Also, are you noticing what's going on here with this blue? It's our bubbly has a little special effect on it. So I'm going to get right into that. Also, you're going to need a detail brush. So I am using one of our detail brushes. Um, I think this set comes in a pack of three, I wanna say. And then you're gonna need your stamper and scraper, of course. And then the last thing you're going to need is your sticky base coat and smudge free. So I already swatched these tips ahead of time so you all don't have to sit here and wait forever. However, I did not swatch every single one because I'm gonna show you how I got that pretty blue sheen on the base. So let's start here. Because I didn't want you all to have to wait forever for the polishes to dry, I already swatched some of them. So first you're gonna start with your base coat and then a concealing base. So we are using this concealing base and that is our first coat so i just did one very healthy coat of it and then of course on clean prep nails apply your base coat and apply one coat of bubbly yes so someone said it looks like one of the colors we're using is transparent so the concealing base coat is supposed to be semi-transparent uh, all of these products are already available online in case any of you are wondering. Um, these are not new products per se. So again, if there's anything you see in this video that you love, it is available for purchase now. Um, this is our concealing base coat and you can use it as a base coat if you want or you can use it to hide your free edge. This um, kind of gives it a nice like pink sheen if you have stained yellow nails from polish then this will help cancel it out um temporarily so it'll just like make your nails look like they don't have that yellow staining until you know they grow out etc um the other thing is if you want to do a thin coat you can i decided to opt for a thicker coat because i'm using a clear nail tip again our natural nails are not like completely clear and transparent like these tips are but for what I wanted to do today, I wanted it to be a thicker coat. Now you're gonna take your Expedition Pearl once your bases have dried. So my bubbly base is dry, my concealing base coat is dry, and I can tell because when you touch it, we have no fingerprints. And then you're just gonna apply one very generous coat over the entire nail. Voila. So you can see how it transforms 
those very plain bases and do you see this like gorgeous blue shine on the pink tip now that's from using expedition pearl um, something else to note when you're using things that have like a blue shimmer like this now this goes for any type of iridescent powders flakies anything with this like blue purple sheen that you're seeing in the bottle um it sometimes has like a yellow cast i don't know why that is i don't know like what like shimmers or pigments is used but i noticed that if you're using it in polish in um powders in flakies pretty much any form of a shimmer like this even with glitter uh i've noticed that like glitters that have like a blue clear glitters that have like a blue shimmer has a slight yellow cast and again there's nothing wrong with it it's completely fine it's not like damaged or anything like that that's just how the color has to be formulated i guess but when you put it over a color like pink like how we have here it actually kind of cancels out that like yellow undertone so again it's not a big deal at all like don't mind it that's exactly how it's supposed to be and that will always be the case no matter what kind of like polish or powder you get that has that cast um that blue shine cast it's always like that so now that we have our bases ready to go go ahead and use your straight up black stamping polish and your stamper and scraper to pick up this image so because i don't want to get my mat dirty because black is like the absolute worse to get dirty on your mat i'm gonna use my little paper to scrape it clean so we're gonna try this with my with my ice cube stamper however i am usually a fan of the double-ended stamper or the monocle stamper but we're gonna see i want to i want to do a demonstration for you Oh, hey, well, I actually got a pretty decent pickup. Um, I was going to show you guys the fact that, here, let me move this out of the way so I can show you a little better. Um, I wanted to show you the fact that sometimes with the ice cube, depending what type of design, specifically if it's more like fine line designs, it can be a little bit harder to pick up the details. Like, some people have no issues, but if you are someone who Hulk smashes or has more of a firm touch like myself, doing fine line designs like this can be a little bit tricky with the ice cube. So I recommend using either your double ended, my trusty double ended. Look at how clean that looks. All the lines are like perfect. Or you can even try using... Your monocle so don't mind my monocle it's like very loved my stampers are so so loved but it's because once I get it to like the tackiness I like I like use it until it literally is completely broken apart and I cannot use it anymore um, tiny little scrapes or scratches that kind of thing does not bug me at all I will still use the stamper so you can see here that also the lines picked up really well but this by far is like the best so my favorite stamper i highly highly recommend the double ended um this stamper is better for like wide line uh or sorry designs that have more solid etching but again it's a personal preference. I work better with these. If you work better with your ice cube, that's completely fine. I know that our boss, Carol, she loves using the ice cube. She uses it for everything. But again, for me, this is my go-to. So let's get into the reverse stamping portion. So you're gonna use your mat or whatever swatching area you want. I'm going to be using, there we go this little paper that I was using earlier. And then you're gonna go ahead and just apply a few dots of your BAM white. So that should kind of do it. 
and then a few dots of your bubbly polish. So we're gonna color the stars first, and then we will do the butterflies. So for this, make sure you have your stamper ready to go. Now I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of polish with my detail brush and I'm gonna start randomly coloring in some of these stars. So I'm gonna make sure, I'm trying to angle it so that way you guys can see And then, because I want to make sure that I get some of those pretty blue bubbly stars, I'm trying to randomly color in the different stars white. And then some will be that bubbly blue color. So now I'm gonna go in and color those stars. So for one hand, you pretty much only need like well, okay, unless you have really, really large nails, more than likely you're only gonna need two um, like full nail designs to do one hand. But you know, some of you who have smaller nails, you're probably only gonna need to use like one full nail design to do um, through like one whole hand. So for example, if you stamp two of these, this might be enough for your like both hands. So I'm gonna color my stars blue first this time and I kind of want to make them in a different location as the white stars so I'm not doing exactly the same because if you do it exactly the same sometimes it looks too repetitive so I like to try to switch things up and make it a little different each time. If I'm not answering your questions, please forgive me. I have the phone in an area that it's just above my eyesight. So I can see what I'm doing and like during reverse stamping, but it's hard for me to monitor what is on the screen. But at least I know that I'm in frame because I feel like a lot of times when I'm doing lives with everyone I'm not I'll forget to be like in frame or I'll end up like out of frame while I'm talking so this time I was like maybe I'll try it a slightly different way make the camera a little higher so it guarantees I'm almost always in frame but it also means that it's like very difficult for me to look at my phone and talk to you at the same time okay so you can turn it over and make sure yep looks very very good now we're gonna go ahead and take your indicon blue and then your light blue droplet and you're just gonna add a nice big dollop right on your little swatch paper or whoops your mat up to you so the fun thing about this okay not that you're gonna do this but this is a really slick surface so you can make a decal on that so for example if I wanted to use those like polished dots once they dry up for something later I could technically do that okay so now that you have your droplet blue with a clean brush grab a little bit of that polish this should be a good amount. If you can see, I have like a small droplet of it, maybe a little less actually. And then you're gonna go towards the center of your design 
and you're just randomly gonna color it. So like you can see here, it's not perfect. I'm not perfectly coloring anything. It's not like um, I'm coloring in the lines. I literally just kind of add a dot and then I just kind of pull the polish out very lightly though. I'm not trying to drag really hard with my brush because it's gonna cause problems, but I'm not doing the best job of coloring it in either. I'm not trying to cover every single empty space because we're gonna add a dark blue and then it's gonna kind of fade into our light blue. So again, it's just like very tiny motions that I'm making. So let's take a closer look. You see, it's not perfect lines. I just kind of dropped a bead of polish and then I just kind of drag it slightly. Again, very, very slightly. So it's not like perfectly even, it's a little, it's a little wonky, but it'll be okay. You'd be surprised how cute it looks at the end. Just trust the process. There we go. Okay, so now that we have our light blue down, I'm gonna just put this down and then I'm gonna go work on the other stamper. I decided to show you what it's gonna look like with the two stamper effect just because I didn't know whether I would need two full designs of these for my three tips. Um, for the other set that I created here, let me show you all uh, I ended up using like two full nail designs and these tips are huge I assume that like majority of your nails are not this large um, these are really really large but I used yeah two full nails and then I just scattered it all across and I'll show you how to do that in a bit okay now we're gonna do our other design here so again, using that droplet blue, you're just going to add it randomly, but make sure to keep it closer to the center of the butterfly's body. So I believe Kayla's makeup is inspired by a blue morpho butterfly. Um, blue morpho butterflies have iridescent properties and then they don't always have like a light blue fade usually it's just like one solid color and it kind of shifts color I think I even have I have one on my on my nail shelf and it's really pretty okay the polish is at uh, a dangerous state. Can you see what's happening here? When I touch it, it kind of doesn't look very wet. It's kind of drying up and that is going to cause a problem for me because it might accidentally pull up the black stamping polish, which we do not want. So the blue morpho butterfly is one of my favorites because it's so pretty and I believe it is a Peruvian butterfly but I think it's also in other tropical climates you can find it. Um, 
I am not an entomologist, but I do like bugs. Uh, looking at bugs. I don't want to touch them. I just want to look. <laughs> um, so I like bugs. I like plants. So I like to collect plants. And I also like to collect dead insects that have died from natural causes. So I have like a couple of framed butterflies and moths and then I also have a few like resin beetles. Like the beetles are suspended in resin. Where did our dark blue go? Uh, what? Brain fart. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so let's use some of that Indicon and then we're going to go over our butterflies. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. So go ahead and color in your butterfly. And then you're gonna see what it looks like. So we're just using Indicon to cover the entire butterfly. So this is not difficult, it really isn't. And again, um, if you were doing this on your own without a camera, I guarantee you can do it much faster than how long it takes me with the camera in my face. Um, I feel like I was able to do a set of five, maybe within 15 minutes because the amount of polish that is used on this is so little that you kind of don't need much you know when you're looking at how much i'm using it's basically just a draw oh whoops hello thought i was in frame and i super was not sorry about that So I'm, you might notice that I'm dragging, but again, I'm doing it very, very gently. So if you're gonna drag, be very careful. Um, if you are newer to reverse stamping, I recommend just kind of gently tapping, tapping the design so that way you don't worry about dragging until you get more comfortable with reverse stamping. And if I, again, missed your question, sorry about that. However, please make sure at the end, I'm gonna ask you all um, if you have any questions about the design that we did today, and then make sure you save those questions for me and then input them at the end when I ask for any feedback. So that way I have a chance to take a look and respond to you in case I didn't, or if Tiana missed it. Although Tiana is really good about responding and she also knows a lot about stamping too. So I'm pretty sure whatever question you have, there's a high chance she can answer it as well. Okay, so we're at that point where my polish is getting way too sticky. So we're going to add another drop of Indicon. Now, if you are not in front of an AC like how I am right now because it's Hawaii and it's gotten really gross and hot, like very, very gross, <laughs> um, then you don't have to necessarily have the AC on.
but because it's so hot and sticky lately, I needed to have the AC on. Usually in our lives, I don't turn it on because I want it to be quiet and I want you guys to not hear that like funny clicking sound that my AC makes, but I don't know, I thought, well, it's either that or you're just gonna see me fidget a lot. And I figured it'd probably be better if I spent all my energy focusing on <laughs> reverse coloring the world's tiniest designs. Tiana's probably laughing like, I can't believe you're doing all of this reverse coloring for such itty bitty butterflies. Tiana has a very good nail art style. Her style is usually simple, easy, clean, cute. My style is usually painstakingly detailed. So she always jokes that she's like, I'm not beginner friendly. <laughs> I'm not a beginner friendly uh, nail artist and it is kind of hard because won't lie I do have a lot of experience as a professional tech and a professional educator for like nail nail professionals not just like DIY artists so that sometimes that comes through and I end up go getting all intense with the art <laughs> But I try, I try my best to do something that is like, not, not so crazy. But I really believe in you guys. I think you can do this, especially if you have this kind of detail brush, honestly. Pain to see, Tiana. <laughs> I just caught Tiana's comment, painstakingly detailed. Yes, it, I know, I know. I know, I make all your heads and eyes super sore make you all cross-eyed um, when we're doing this kind of thing. But I promise you, if you have our detail brush, specifically, I think the best for these kinds of things is um, it's a set of three that came with our uh, mythical Manny by Me box, which was like, I, I'm not sure when, maybe last year? Um, if you have those brushes, which are available on the site for purchase, they make life so simple. Also, I'm gonna remove some of these sticky things here, or well, the black, the black stuff here. We don't want that. I mean, I don't think it's gonna get stuck on anything, but just in case, why risk it? Because we spent all that, oh wow. Did you see how I almost messed up the design instantly? That would have been so, so irritating. <laughs> I literally almost took it all off with the, with this little piece of paper that I have, um, which is from my sticky stamper station. I just wanted to try and remove any of that black stuff uh, on the sides because again, we just spent how long reverse stamping. I don't really wanna <laughs> ruin it on the first, first few moments. Um, by now, your stamps are probably dry. So the way we will do this is I'm going to start with the middle first and we're going to put the sticky stamping polish kind of in a U down here. Hello. Thanks for joining us, everyone. So I'm going to do a little bit of my sticky stamping or my sticky base. And again, as you can see, I barely have any on the brush and I'm just gonna do like a U shape. It doesn't have to be a perfect U. And that should do it. So we're gonna let that dry for a bit. And then think the way that I did it, I. I did the top. I You can either do it the like bottom corner like this or you can do it the top. I did it the top earlier, so 
just gonna paint it all messy over there. Since I wanna make sure that it doesn't accidentally dry too much, I'm just gonna do only two nails right now. Then I'm gonna touch this. Yep, it's good to go. <clears throat> Okay, so here comes the interesting part. You are going to stamp it, but don't just like push down. This is how I get one design to last for so many nails. So you're just going to be pushing like slightly. Because when you look inside your stamper, you can see what is being transferred. So let me show you again. And then you can also like turn your design a little bit. So I'm gonna show you guys in a sec. Give me a moment because I wanna make sure that I get this all down. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm doing this. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. See, the butterflies came out super cute and you can see how it's like got the light blue and the dark blue. It ends up looking really, really good together. I promise you, it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, now let's try and do this again for this side. Yep, it's practically ready. So you are going to, here, let me see if I can do it. Can you guys see? trying to arrange it so that way you can see so hold on give me one second everybody I'm trying to make sure that I get an angle that everybody can see at um, okay do you see what's going on here? You can see, like, if I do this, you can see that there's like a little circle down below that's getting bigger um, when I push down. So I'm only pushing the areas that I want designs to transfer. I'm not pushing everything. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, here, let me try and there so because i want a tip of the butterfly there i'm only pushing down on the tip and then you just kind of go in and fill any spots that you see that you're like oh i want a little bit more design there So I think I want the butterfly to kind of be more like that. There we go. So I'm basically just kind of arranging the stamper in different ways. So that way I get the look that I want. So you kind of have to just kind of wiggle your stamper all around to get this because it is possible. Oh, oops. Oops. Oh, there we go. Now, the only thing is you have to be really careful because if you're using the sticky base coat and you don't remember where you placed it, again, be careful about how you're pressing down and what you're pressing down. Yeah, it dries clear. So even more so, you won't know exactly where um, the stickiness is if you're not careful. So that's how you do it. Again, I just kind of like wiggle my stamper around and I'm gonna try and show you on another nail tip so that way it's easier because this is supposed to be our display tip and I want it to look pretty for the end result. I don't wanna show you guys like on these tips but I'll show you at the end how to do it on another like not cute tip and we can kind of get a little closer because I know it's been a little tricky for everyone to see. So you can see here that, well, let's see, can you see? 
Uh, you can kind of see here that it's wet. Do you see this like reflection here? That's how you know that that area is still wet. Because when you go down here, the reflection is nice and smooth. It's like one piece. But here, it's really shiny. And I can see the light very, very easily. I know it's tricky to see all this stuff with all the sparkles and everything that's on the, the nail tip. So for this, we're going to use our second design. Uh-oh, I might have to sneeze everybody. Oh, oh no. Nail polish, the scented nail polish sometimes makes you sneeze. And acetone too. Okay, so let's touch this. Yep, it's sticky. A preemptive bless you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay, so I think it might be easier for you to see with this. Look, we're just gonna go ahead and start stamping some of the designs. Oh, you see the polish was a little bit too wet, so now I'm gonna have to figure out a way to hide that. So, oops, oh, that's gonna drive me crazy. It's okay. It's cool that some of the butterflies are cut up because it makes it easy for you to just like put it on the side of the design or the side of the nail. So sometimes I don't even push it all the way down if I can like get it lifted up off the, the stamper. Like even if it's just a partial lift, it's good enough because I can push it down with my finger or another stamper, but I just don't want to end up getting something stuck in a place that I didn't want it to be. So it's okay if this happens, because you can always just go like that. Plus the sticky base is there, protecting the nail. So even now, I can place tiny stars. Oh, I spoke too soon. Oh, there we go. So I'm just kind of, you see how I'm like pushing down? Nothing else is really touching. Well, I think my sticky base is kind of dried. Oh, there we go. Um, nothing else is touching the stamper when I do this. I just kind of like push it in one spot. So that way we can get the effect that we're looking for. But again, I know this is not always the easiest for everyone. <laughs> like Tiana said, it can be sometimes very painstakingly <laughs> difficult, but I promise you it is worth it. Plus it's a cool technique to learn. So if you have a spot that doesn't stick, you could always just clean off the brush and add just the smallest amount. So if you, looked at my brush, it looked like it was dry. It's almost a dry brush effect, what we're going for right now, but that's only because I needed just a tiny bit to fill that small hole. I think I wanted to fill it with this design. Uh, yeah, this one. There we go. And this is the finished product. So again, you can add more butterflies if you want. You can add more stars. Part of me wants to add like 
one more butterfly like right there let's see if this trick works if not sometimes it'll oh yay sometimes it does work with a dry a dry design but you just kind of have to be gentle and finesse it a little bit but it can like there I just got it to work again so I'm just pushing down voila okay I think I'm satisfied with that I think I can stop now <laughs> um so use your smudge free top coat to cover everything I'm so happy you all are learning tons in our live that is the goal of these lives we want to give you the information and the tools so that way you can create whatever masterpiece you want you don't ever have to do exactly what we're doing um, if you recreate this design you're also welcome to add your own take to it and please make sure you at mention us and hashtag us because we love seeing your creations and we love seeing what um, you add to the design because again a lot of times you guys end up doing like your own fun little twist on it and it's super cool to see sometimes it makes me like wow why didn't we think of that <laughs> that's so clever so this is the finished look and look at how many extra butterflies we have left over so i feel like you could probably get away with doing like another hand or like maybe not a full other hand but like another nail this is definitely enough to do at least one more nail so that is the very cool trick about using this technique also, you're going to notice that you're seeing some kind of funky, like, smokiness. Don't worry. The design is fine. It just takes time to dry. Once it dries, it'll be completely shiny, just like how it is up here. But let me show you our completed look so you can see what it looks like. And also, I... Do I need to show you guys again how I got the butterflies to like go in a particular direction or was it clear? Give me some hearts if you think it's clear about how I got the butterflies to go in certain spaces. And also if you have any like last minute questions or things that you want to ask, now is your time. Please go ahead and type those in because we're going to be ending the live in a little bit. Oh, yay. Let's see a couple of hearts. I'm happy that you all were able to see exactly how I kind of like place things because that trick that I showed you of how to place like individual designs, it is so useful. You can rearrange whatever stamped image you want as long as the image like isn't all connected. You can rearrange and like customize your stamped designs. That's what I do a lot of the time, especially like in art, um, whenever I have to like make nail tips or things like that for Manny by Me promos, a lot of the time I use that trick to get my very own like custom look. Well, it seems like we didn't have too many questions and I think you guys all nailed it and seem to have gotten the technique. So Thank you so much for joining me today. And again, please make sure you at mention us, hashtag us. We love seeing your creations and I hope everyone has an amazing week. Again, if I missed any of, um, any of your comments or anything like that, we do have a team that goes back into the comments after the live is done to answer and catch any other stuff. So yes, Deborah, this technique that I showed you today can be used on like so many things also make sure you uh, play around with expedition pearl and any of our moonbeam colors because you'd be so surprised how it can take like a plain boring color and make it like completely different and new um, my favorite trick that I learned today was the fact that the expedition pearl over the concealing base coat is like 
chef's kiss perfect i really like this combination it's very cute anyways i hope you all have a great week and thank you so much for joining bye